Today we are speaking about not what you see, not what you hear, not what you feel, but what you believe. Wave your hands to the glory of God. Not what you see, not what you hear, not what you feel, but what you believe. I love the song we finished to sing here, Just Believe. God is looking people who will just believe. In the middle of every situation, just believe. I want you to understand everything that you do as a human. Everything that we are engaged in and everything that we do is because we saw other people doing them. We heard it from other people. Or maybe we feel those things within us. Everything human being we do is a result of what we see. Result of what we hear. The result of what we are feeling. And I'd like everyone here, including the children, give me your attention. And for you at home, give me your attention for this time. It is important to be able to distinguish your feelings and what you believe. Because if you don't distinguish your feelings of what you believe, it will affect your journey and it will always bring you to live fleshy life not spiritual life feelings is part of the senses feelings is simply you feel something is part of the emotions it's an emotion you feel however i'm gonna go down i want you to understand that there is also feelings which are also spiritual feelings get this clear we are driven with what we are seeing some of you never thought you can dress the way you are dressing, but because you saw someone else dressing that way. Some of you never thought you are going to be able to speak a particular word, but you heard that word and suddenly you realize you start to speak it. It's because we are connected to people and we always be able to release the things that we have captured from different areas. Now, when we talk about not what you feel, because your feelings can only lead you astray. Your feeling can lie to you. Your feeling can send some information which are not right. And because you allow to go with your feelings, tomorrow again you're going to feel some another type of feelings. Feelings do change the more you grow or the more you engage in something. What you speak, let me say this clear. What you are speaking it's because maybe you heard it somewhere and maybe you feel it somewhere there and then you start to release it what do you believe that is my question first before you can be able to maintain what you believe you must know what you believe if you don't know what you believe then you're going to be driven by what you hear you're going to be driven by what you're feeling or be driven by what you have seen if you don't know what you believe i'll give an example in a relationship before you can believe, so before you can start to believe someone, you have seen the person, you heard someone, and then you came to a point, you trust this person, then you believe, which means you have faith in this person, that you see a little girl who says, Mom, I'm ready to get married with this person. Why? Because I believe, I feel, I believe that this man is the right man to look after me. There is a belief that shifted you to be with this person. Now, being with that person does not mean that that's, you are not going to see something negative. You can see something negative. You can hear something negative about this person. But as long as you put your belief in him, you're going to still stand. Because there is a belief that is strengthening you. Now, we are living in a moment where you should understand most of the time we live in a world of feelings. You just wake up, you feel, this is what I feel to do. And particularly, I have the freedom to speak what I feel I can speak. You can speak what you feel to speak, but it's not what you believe you should speak. Somebody say amen. When we don't distinguish our feelings, what we have seen, what we are hearing, with our belief, then we put our faith at risk. 
because our faith has nothing to actually faith does not have a sense our faith becomes in danger when we want to connect our faith by what we see other people doing or what we hear other people are doing or what we feel because faith is not in this class it's outside the box and that's why you see some people who always grown up to go to church and have never had the sense of belief when you start to go to high school this teacher start to lie to you with some stories then you start to change your belief simply because you never had a deep belief in god your eyes can lie to you your feelings can lie to you now why do i want to emphasize here about the feelings and about the belief the reason god the reason why god requested us to meditate his word day and night is so that we may keep on feeding our faith you meditate the same word day and night so that you keep on feeding what you believe how do we maintain our to believe is to keep on repeating the same thing that we believe i am born again i am born again i am born again i am born again the more you repeat what you believe that you you, more, you maintain what you believe and your faith keeps on going down remember your spirit can hear your spirit can sense the situation and it can send the information to you get here i want you to get this one what you see can deceive you what you heard can be a lie what you feel can change but what you believe keeps you moving forward somebody say amen what you see can deceive you what you heard or what you hear can be a lie what you feel can change but what you believe that what keeps you moving what you believe that is what build your faith your beliefs that what build your faith because i believe this so therefore my faith is strong because i believe in this how i want to give an example you can see there are some people who believe something that for your understanding you may say how come a normal person can believe this but this is not true you can judge someone what to believe but this is not clear but as long the person they told him that this is true you cannot change that person's belief because that person hold on it because that what my parent or that what my religion told me so you may look at it like they are no normal you may say what how come a normal person well educated can bow down before a statue how come a normal person can worship the sun you may criticize or you can criticize but the reason that the person is standing firm it can come and shift you from your belief somebody say believe somebody say believe first corinthians chapter 2 verse 9 to 14. i want you to get here first corinthians chapter 2 verse 9 to 13 however as it is written what no eyes has seen what no ears has heard and what no human mind has conceived the things god has prepared for those who love him these are the things god has revealed to us by his spirit the spirit searches all things even the deep things of god for we know as a person's thought example their own spirit sorry. for who know who knows a person thought except their own spirit within them in the same way no one knows the thought of god except the spirit of god 12 what we have received is not the spirit of the world but the spirit who is from god so that we may understand what god has freely given us this is what we speak not a word taught as by human wisdom but in the words taught by the spirit explaining spiritual realities with the spirit taught word 14 the person without the spirit does not accept the things that comes from the spirit of god 
but consider them foolishness and cannot understand them because they are discerned only through the spirit. Amen. The reason we found we depend on what we have seen or what we've heard, we've heard, sorry, where we are hearing. Number one is because we fail to hear from God. When you can't hear from God, you are likely to follow what people speak. When you can't hear from God, you are likely to hear what the human people, what other people or what is happening in place. When you can't see from God, you are able to see from people. When you can't feel what the spirit signal is sending to you because they are spiritual thing, they need a spiritual discernment for you to discover them. Now, the reason we always found it difficult and we run out of understanding from God, it's because there is a lack of connection between us and the spirit of God. Remember, we are carrying the body. And the signal of the Spirit of God that lives in us, the, the signal of the things of God are sent to us by the Spirit of God. And they request spiritual discernment. The things of God can be foolish when we want to think them in a human mind. That's why Paul said, what no eyes has seen, what no ears have heard, what no mind have conceived, that is what the Lord has planned for you. What your eyes have not yet seen, what your ears have not heard, what your mind have not yet conceived, that is what the Lord has in plan for you. You may say, Pastor, but I can see it. Yes, but the Bible said, not what you can see, not what you can hear, not what you can feel. But what is hidden, someone? Somebody say amen. And to discover this, what the Lord has put in place for you, you need what we call discernment. And I'll give this how you can capture the signal of the spiritual reality. How to capture the signal of spiritual reality. When you cannot capture the signal of spiritual reality, you are so easily, it will be so easy to be taken away. Here that we have the, the story that happened to Joshua and Moses. The book of Exodus chapter 32, verse 17 to 18. I want you to read that scripture. When Joshua heard the noise of the people shouting, he said to Moses, there is the sound of war in the camp. Moses replied, it is not the sound of victory. It is not the sound of defeat. It is the sound of singing that I hear. Here there are two people who can hear something. I want you to get this how you can capture the signal of what God has in reserve for you. Joshua was a young man comparing to Moses. They are all coming from the mountain. They rec Moses received these ten tablets. Sorry, these ten commandments. And as they are coming from the mountain... Joshua was quick to hear the sound. He, then he said, I can hear the sound. I can hear the sound of the war. I can hear the sound. Moses be older than Joshua. But because Moses could hear things in spiritual realm, he spoke to Moses, to Joshua. No, it's not a sound of a victory. It's not a sound of a war. But it's a sound of a singing. Joshua, Joshua could capture the sound in a human hearing. But Moses could capture the sound in a spiritual hearing. I don't know how to you are capturing. I don't know what you are hearing. What sound you are hearing. I don't know what sound you are hearing. Comparing to the age as Joshua being young, he could be able to capture the sound better. He could know, yes, people are, sing, are singing. People are dancing. But he captured the wrong sound because he heard it in a human ears. And when you start to hear things in a human ears, you always have a different way of approaching the situation. And here Moses could hear, he could say, I can hear the sound. Somebody say, I hear the sound. 
Say, I hear the sound. Say, I hear the sound. I hear the sound. You must be able to hear the sound to know what is sound I'm hearing. And this sound, what the message is in this sound. Moses said, it's not the sound of a war. It's not a sound of a victory. But it's the sound of a singing. And indeed, when they came down to the mountain, they found these people are singing and dancing, praising. What? They are praising the golden calf. When we fail to understand the reality, when we fail to understand what is happening with the spiritual ears, we'll be able to approach the situation negatively or in a fleshy manner. There is a carnal mind and there is a spiritual mind. A person driven by the carnal mind, you always think things in a carnal mind. You approach situation in a carnal mind. A person driven by the spirit, you approach things in a spiritual mind. Somebody say, Amen. Not what you hear. Not what you see. Not what you feel. But what you believe. The second person here is Elisha. Elijah, sorry, and Ahab. First King, chapter 18, verse 41. First King, chapter 18, verse 41. And Elijah said to Ahab, Go eat and drink, for there is a sound of a heavy rain. So Ahab went off to eat and drink. But Elijah climbed to the top of the camel, bent down to the ground, and put his face between his knees. Go look toward the sea, he told his servant. And when he went up and looked, there is nothing there, he said. Seven times Elijah said, go back. The seventh time, the servant reported, a cloud as a smaller as a man's hand is rising from the sea. So Elijah said, go and tell Ahab, hit up your chariot and go down before the rain stops you. Here we have another story about two people. And here is Elijah, is involving Elijah, Ahab and his servant. After Elijah declared three years and a half without rain in the country, and after slotting the 450th first prophet of Baal, the sky was dry. There was no sound of rain. There was no any image of rain. And but here, Elijah, before even he could see that small cloud, he spoke to Ahab first. He spoke to Ahab said, I can hear the sound of a heavy rain i can hear a sound of a heavy rain from afar but ahab doesn't see anything the sky is totally blue the sky is totally dry but i can hear a sound of a heavy rain you may look your life as if it's dry you may look your situation as if it's dry you may look your condition as if it's dry but in a spiritual realm something is growing somebody say amen you may look your sink like the sky is totally blue. There is no rain. There is no future. But the Lord said, but I can hear the sound of a heavy rain. I can hear the sound of transformation of your children. I can hear the changes in your marriage. I can hear the changes in your business. I can hear the changes in your relationship with God. I can hear the sound. Somebody say the sound. Hear Elijah. He's just, he cannot see the rain, but he can hear the rain. But Ahab, looking outside, say, there's nothing. Then he said, now my servant, can you go and look? Servant goes. He goes. I, I love you. I love you. He says, go and look toward the sea. He told his servant. And he went up, looked. I'm reading 43. There is nothing there, he said. Elijah is sending his servant, go toward the sea. Go and see something there. Because for me, I can see something. But he went, the servant goes, sorry, say, I don't want to disrespect you. There's nothing there. Go again, the second time, and look at it. It's just dry. Sir, there is nothing there. But Elijah with the spiritual eyes 
I can see the rain. You and me, we want to see the evidence before you can believe that God can do it. You and me, we want to see the evidence, the tangible things. But it's something which no eyes have seen, no ears have heard, no mind has conceived what the Lord has in plan for you. Put your hands for the glory of God. In a dry situation, I don't know who I'm talking to. Maybe you're in a dry situation. You are in a dry moment where you lost hope. The Bible said, no, I can see the rain. Third time, servant is going. Listen, Elijah remained the place of prayer. Retaining, there is no rain. But Elijah said, I cannot leave this place for me to convince you. But I can see and I can feel a heavy rain. Somebody say, let it rain. Say, let it rain. Say, let it rain. Say, let it rain. And here, until the servant could come and say, I can see the little cloud on his hand, just a little cloud somewhere there, just a little cloud. Elijah said, ah, it's too late. Go quick and tell Elijah to Ahab to rush quick, to run quick. To run quick before the rain stops him. You should understand that there is things that the Lord has already reserved for you. And those things are things that you cannot be able to explain. And you, when you understand that the Lord called you to see greater things, but what he called you to see is not with your physical eyes. And the third example here is a man we call Elisha. I'm trying to give you the example of two people. I'm giving two people. Two people, one who can see with the physical, who can feel physically, and someone who can see spiritually, and someone who can feel spiritually, physically. And the type of these people, they are all in the church. Remember, Eli Moses and Joshua, they all came from the same mountain way God gave Ten Commandments to Moses. They were all in the presence of God. But there were different ways of looking. Elijah had his servant whom we assume, although the name doesn't tell us the name, we know it was Elijah. Because the anointing was on Elijah. Even if Elijah was going with Elijah, but he was not the anointing of be able to discern spiritual realities. And we have that things even in the house of God. Where there are two categories of people. One can see physically. Another one can see spiritually. It is always be a battle. When you want to work with someone who sees things physically. And you see things spiritually. It's like I'm married to one person. <laughs> Let's be, anyway, I'm married to one person, not to two people anyway. You are married to your husband or to your wife. But your husband has a carnal mind. And your wife has a spiritual mind. You will live life of arguing forever. Because for you, you can see it's a red color. But for him, he say it is a blue color. He can only be able to see that it's a red color until now he also have spiritual eyes. Therefore, if you were with someone, maybe it's your friend, maybe it's your relative, maybe it's your husband, your wife, you know you are totally different. Do not argue. Just understand, oh, I said red, he said blue, which means it's blue for him. I don't want even to argue. Until the term that person will be able to see like you, you cannot walk in the same understanding. Somebody say amen. The third example, 2 Kings chapter 6, verse 15 to 17. 2nd King chapter 6, 15 to 17. When the servant of the, listen, when the servant of the man of God got up and went out early in the next morning, an army with horses and chariot had surrounded the city. Oh no, my Lord, what shall we do? The servant asked. Do not be afraid, the prophet answered. Those who are with us are more than those who are with them. And Elijah prayed. Open his eyes. Somebody say open. 
open. Somebody say open. His eyes. Now, when we finish to read here, who saw the troop first? According to the scripture, it was the servant of the man of God who went out and he saw the army of the Syria. Did he saw him? He was blind. His eyes he could see. He saw things with the different eyes. And secondly, when he saw it, he panicked. He was afraid. But listen how verse 16 says, Don't be afraid, the prophet answered. Those who are with us are more than those who are with them. And Elijah prayed, Open his eyes, Lord, so that he may see. Then the Lord opened the servant's eyes and he looked and saw the hill full of horses and chariots of fire around Elijah. Now, if Elijah could not pray for God to open the eyes of his servant, the servant could be living or be filled with the panic and fear because he cannot see the reality of of what is happening in the realm of spirit. And I know some people, many of you, you are backed up with fear and panic in your life because your spiritual eyes are not yet open. Until when your eyes are open, you'll be able to see beyond what you can see with your physical eyes. Somebody say, Amen. Say, Lord, open my eyes. If Elisha could not pray for his servants, his servants could be panicking here, and here Elisha could be peaceful, calm, and enjoying himself. And that you realize in life spiritually, you see someone is pop, 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 is panicking here, and another one is just calm. And that's what happened between Jesus and disciples when they were in the boat. The disciples were panicking. Jesus was doing what? Was doing what? Was doing what? Easily sleep. Listen, sleep is a sign that everything is okay with you. If things are not okay with you, you don't sleep. You turn, you, you turn around, around your bed. You turn around and around your bed. When you sleep, or you are sleeping long, which means you are good. Praise the Lord. So, Elisha if he could not pray for his servant, there could be a spiritual conflict inside his servant love. And I want you to know this. Whatever conflict you may feel battling inside of you, it's because you don't believe that the Lord has dispatched a big army to watch over you. Maybe you are panicking with some situation. Why? It is because your eyes have seen the army of Assyria. But in a spiritual realm, there is an army of God that watches over you, that surrounds you, that protects your family, that watches over you. Somebody say amen. Secondly, do not be moved by some visions. There are some of you, you live, I saw this dream. I dream this dream. I dream this dream. Are you living by the dream? Are you living by the word of God? Devil can infiltrate your dreams. And bring panic in your life. But when you start to believe. That I believe that the word of God. Is yes and amen. Is unshakable. Therefore you are stable. Somebody say amen. What is the difference between this example? The difference simply means someone is walking by what they see and another one is walking by what they believe. Elijah believed that the Lord is with them. Elijah believed that the rain is going to come. Elijah believed that the army was around him. Moses could hear the sound that this is from God. And that made these people, they were so peaceful and quiet and calm 
even when situation were very tense. What do you feel? What goes inside of you when you saw some images or when you hear some information? When you feel something? We are not people to be responding by our feelings. We shouldn't people to respond by the feelings. We should people to respond by the word of God. The reason why many people, even the believers, will struggle because people, there are few people who have the word of God with them. And if you don't have the word of God inside of you, it is so easy to be carried by what you are feeling or by what you hear. The Bible says, whose report should we believe? What report should we hold on? Not because this is what you have seen, you have heard, you build your faith on it. Absolutely not. You should always know that the Lord has a plan and whatever I say, it will come to pass. Somebody say amen. It will always be difficult to work with someone with a carnal mind. A carnal mind, the person interprets it, it things, things in a fleshy way. But a spiritual mind person can only explain things with the spiritual understanding and this is discernment. Flesh eyes can understand, listen, fleshly eyes cannot understand the mysteries of God. Carnal ears cannot hear the voice of God. But it is only God when he starts to speak to us through his spirit. We capture the signal of the spirit and then peace comes inside. Listen here. here. The reason why there is a many false problem in a prophetic ministry today it's because people they are capturing a, no, a wrong sound the reason there is a lack of accuracy in some of the prophets the prophets or oh sorry in the reason why there is some acute lack of accuracy in some of the prophets ministry with people they perform it is because the way they capture the signal is wrong imagine if moses imagine if joshua was a prophet the message he would give could be totally wrong. Because for him, I can hear the sound of people, they, people at war. Well, it wasn't it. And that's how prophetic ministry is. is you can he get something. How do you capture the signal? What message do you capture? Is something happening? How do you capture it? Is that accuracy? And you can check during this moment. <laughs> it's like all the prophets have gone off. No one is talking. Because they were all giving some false, false, false. They realized they give four times, three times. Corona is going to die. Corona, this, corona. Then no one is prophesying anymore. Why? Because they were giving some, the, capturing wrong signal and give wrong information. But when you sit with God, the Lord will always give you the correct message. Put your hands for the glory of God. What you what are you hearing now? What can you see now? I want you to do this personal right now. I want you to do this personal. I'll ask I'll ask the stop of the movement, the be lot of movement. Stop that. What are you fearing? Now, what are you feeling now? I want you to take this personal. Take this message personal right now. What are you feeling? Which you feel, I'm feeling these things, but it's not godly. What are you hearing? I can hear what I'm hearing, but it's challenging what I believe. It's trying to make sense, but it's no standing of what I believe. What can you see? Yeah, I see this. I come to this message. I was told this, but I, I think it's challenging what I believe. If you don't challenge what you believe, sorry, if you don't challenge what you hear, what you feel, you want to put your faith at risk. What are you feeling about yourself as a person? What are you feeling toward your brother? What are you feeling toward your 
maybe your company, your spouse. Do you feel he or she doesn't love you? Did he or she say that or you just feel it? Do you feel your mom doesn't love you? It's simply because of something or you feel it or did he, she say it really? Do you feel your brother in Christ doesn't love you or doesn't be with you? Do you feel that or did he or she say that? When we don't pay attention with the sound, what? The sound that we receive by hearing, by feelings, we expose what we have. God only wants you to believe. And our belief should not be, I want to see the proof. Actually, we all live by faith. For you who are here, you came and you sat on that chair straight forward. You didn't ask. Is he made in Australia or is it men in Germany? You didn't ask. You believe that this chair is there. As long as the ashes put it there, they assess, they know that this chair is, a, is capable to hold you. You sit on it. But if someone speaks to you, pay attention with this chair. Because you heard that, your trust on the chair disappeared. Because someone has said it. And the reason why many believers are not standing firm. Because what they've been believing, they've heard someone else came and said something. What you believe, that what maintains your faith. Somebody say, I believe. If you can't hear from God, if you can't see, maybe you may say, Pastor, how am I going to hear now? As I'm going to the ending, the way you're going to hear now, which call a spiritual discernment. That is a gift of discernment. And actually, I would, des I would desire everyone ask. The Bible says you should ask and you receive. It is better every believer to desire spiritual discernment. It's a gift. It's a gift. The gift of discernment. The gift of discernment is very important for you. And I want to say this, why it is very important. Because... Whether you see a vision, whether you see dreams, discernment is the capacity to distinguish the spirit. Is the capacity for you to understand what is happening and it gives you the wisdom how to judge the information that you received. Whether you see a vision or dream or hear the voice, Still, you need discernment. It's a gift of the Holy Spirit. It's the ability to help you to judge things well. To distinguish between the spirits with S at the end. To hear things clearly. To see things and feel things with the spiritual senses. Like how Elijah could say, I can hear the sound of a heavy rain. Discernment helps you to see things and feel things and assess the situation with godly wisdom. This gift helps a believer to see and to understand the season and what is happening in a realm of spirit. Then it gives the wisdom how to apply the message that you have received. 1 Corinthians chapter 12 verse 10, it says this. To another, 
miracle powers to another prophecy to another distinguishing between the spirit that is another new king james say another descending of the spirit which means distinguishing between the spirit to another the different kind of time now distinguishing between the spirit as discernment gift is given to you to distinguish between the spirit which means in a realm of spirit there are many spirits so you'll be able to distinguish this is not godly spirit it is a discernment that will help you to know this message i'm receiving is not from god i'm distinguishing this thing it's a discernment you don't need to prove you don't need to see i can see a vision no 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 what you are talking is a lie is a lie no 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 you don't need to, to matter someone discernment spirit it capture what is happening in remote spirit discerners they are able to tell you this week we need to pray for two days because something's happened in remote spirit but for you, you may say but we finished to pray another three weeks why should we pray discerners are quick to capture what is happening in a realm of spirit they sent us a quick to tell you no 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 today the service you're not going to you're going to just finish it two minutes and we go they sent us a quick to is able to assess what is happening and then to judge well so that they may not give room to the spirit he has said to another the work of miracles to another a prophecy to another distinguishing so they so, so they have another descending of the spirit Descending of spirit. When you start to de have, when you have the gift of discernment, you'll be able to hear this person is talking, but what he's talking is not godly. Thank you for talking, my brother, but with my discerning right now, I can see you're trying to deceive me. But you're not going to tell the person that you try to deceive me, but you already distinguish the spirit. There is a lying spirit. There is a, a cheating spirit. There is confusing spirit there is division spirit there is stealing spirit there is all kind of spirits there so when you have a descending spirit you'll be able to know what you should hold and what you should not hold somebody say descending spirit we cannot be able to move from living by our senses if we don't walk by the spirit of god it is this discerning spirit that helps us hebrew chapter 4 5 14 says sorry hebrew 5 14 english standard version say by solid food is for the mature for those who have the power of discernment trained by constant practice to distinguish good from evil among some of the signs of spiritual maturity is a discernment. Among the signs of spiritual maturity is a discernment. The Bible says, but for solid food is for the mature. For those who have their power, sorry, for those who have their powers of discernment trained by constant practice to distinguish good from evil. Remember, evil can look like good. But until you discern it, you realize it wasn't good, it was evil. It is a discernment that helps you. Somebody say amen. Your eyes is the lamp of your body. Similarly, your spiritual eyes is the lamp of your spirit. So, as when you are blind physically, you cannot see anything. It is the same when you are blind spiritually, you cannot see anything. And when you don't have the capacity to discern the reality around you, anybody can come in your life and sow a seed in your life. Anybody can come in your life and tell you stories. You can believe anybody or anything simply because there is no discernment to discern what is right and what is wrong. I love this woman. There is Ruth and Opa. There is Ruth and Opa. Ruth could discern that there is something powerful in Naomi. But Opa could not discern it at all. 
Opa could say, you are already old woman and you have no boy who can marry me anymore. Let me just return. Away. But listen, Ruth said, your God will be my God. Your people will be my people. Ruth could discern what is behind Naomi. And people live with capacity to discern. They are able not to, to hold on things even if they may not see the proof. Because in the spiritual, they believe it will come to be. Somebody say, Amen. To finish, write this down. David killed Goliath because he could see Goliath as an uncircumcised guy. But the soldiers of Saul could see Goliath as a giant. David has a different eyes. He could see Goliath as an uncircumcised guy who has no power. But the soldiers of Saul could see Goliath as a giant because they had physical eyes. I don't know what you consider to be giant in your life. What you think is a giant is not a giant. If you just look closely, you realize it's not a giant. It's an uncircumcised situation. It's a useless situation. It's not a powerful situation. But because you are looking at it with your physical eyes, you think he's a giant. That's why David did not even prepare himself. He knew, I'm going to deal with something little. Do not build your faith by what someone told you. Or by what you have seen. But keep on building your faith to the word of God. Somebody say the word of God. The more you keep on reading the word of God, you are feeding your faith to go deeper inside. Your feeling is emotional. Not discernment. Your feelings, you may, some people say, I can feel, I can feel. It's not discernment. It's just an emotional. Never judge any particular situation by what you heard or by what you saw. But with the strong conviction of the power of the Holy Spirit inside of you. Which kind of voice and vision are you hearing? What kind of vision of voice you are hearing right now? Your faith is built around what you believe. Put that down. Your faith is built around what you believe. What you believe, that's what keep on feeding your faith. And your faith is still strong by what you believe, but not, not by what you see. The reason why... The crowd turned to Jesus and said, crucify him. Because they did not have a belief in him. They could only expect miracles from him. When the crucifix no longer performing miracles, they were quick to clear, crucify him. Your reliance is a result of your belief. You are relying on something, on someone, because you believe. Therefore, keep your belief alive. It doesn't matter what people think. It doesn't matter what the people say. It's a matter of what comes on your way. As long as what you believe is strong, therefore your faith is strong. Somebody say amen. Your faith is made strong by your belief. Therefore, it is very wise to choose what way to follow. It's very wise to choose what you're going to put in place. Not because you feel it, not because you've seen it, but because you can hear the sound that brings the right message. Therefore, do not have faith in yourself. Do not have faith at your work. Do not make have faith for what you are earning. Do not make your faith or build your faith by your capa on your capacity. But have faith in God, believing that he is the only one who can do greater things for you. Father, I thank you for this morning. I pray for this precious word that you have given us. To live by what we believe about you. We know you won't, as in you say in the last day, there will be so many teachers. The Bible says, they will even deceive some elect. I pray today, O oh God, 
that through this word that you have given us to keep our faith in you, believing that what we received from you is true and is a sound doctrine. Protect this woman. Protect this man from a deceiving spirit. Protect your people, the church worldwide, from deception. That we may not live by what we are feeling. Because the enemy can send the signals. But we should live by what you said. In the middle of dryness, in the middle of impossibility, in the middle of a confusion let your people hold on what you have spoken to them from today i pray that those of hearing this message who heard this message are going to hear it again in the future father let them live by what they believe about you not by what they can see or what they can hear blessed today i pray that this week be a blessed week bless everything that we are going to do bless the rest of the day and i pray the hand of healing and the touch upon those who feel they are dry physically you are the healer i pray for the healing upon them i pray for those who feel chained in a particular situation by circumstances let them hear the sound of rain to give them hope and future. Father, receive glory, honor, and praise. In Jesus' name.